We are back on Red's franchise, and based on the request of everybody, Ellie has been edited to give him 99 stealing. It is just well-deserved, pretty much, is what it comes down to. He stole, by the time the last episode came out, he stole second, another pitch happened, steals third, another pitch doesn't happen, steals home. So, it's truly a rare type of talent that can do that. I think he might be the youngest player to ever steal three bases in an inning. We're very close. It, if not, it was like, you know, uh, Bumpus Jones in 1901 or whatever. Bumpus Jones is not the answer. He is the first guy to, or, uh, yeah, a first and only pitcher to ever throw a no-hitter in his debut. Fun fact about Bumpus Jones. But, uh, yeah, Ellie deserves 99 stealing. I think he's only been thrown out one time this year trying to steal and it wasn't really even a true steal attempt he let's see he's got okay 16 stolen bases two caught stealing so one just might be legit oh yeah he overslid the bag is what I, I remember that i think that was in the brewers series he overslid the bag on second but would have been safe and then a pickoff throw to first when he was on third and then tried to get home and he was he was out if you call that an attempted caught stealing which i guess that it is so Truly, it hasn't been a lack of stealing ability. So 99 stealing, we're just going to do it. I, I'd really like to not make any more edits on these players, as it is a franchise experience that is separate from Major League Baseball. I've had a couple of requests. Uh, add the Reds draft class, Rhett Louder, etc. No, uh, we have our own draft picks to worry about, and that's why scouting is important. We're worrying about those guys uh, in the near future. I could change a name, but... We are building our own universe here, so please respect that. And then, of course, you know, other comments like, you you think Alexis Diaz has been bad? He leads the NL and saves, or whatever. I'm like, in the, in the game, dude. In the game. In my franchise series. That's what this is. And welcome back, as we are 50 and 35. Huge. 7 and 3 in our last 10. We went on a roll to end June. The second half of June, and really all of June outside of the first three days, were spectacular for the big league boys. Down at AAA, not so much. I see a lot of L's in here. This might be about 50-50. I don't know. It's I see so many, like every Friday we lose is kind of tough. But every Wednesday, we're the best team in the league. It's bizarre. At AA... I don't know. It's a lot of the same. I see a lot of losses, but then I see a lot of wins. I'm not really worried about those records. We're just worried about development down there. Uh, but 50 and 35 is obviously the best record we have ever seen in this franchise series up to 2025. And we actually might have an all-star or two. And we'll see if we can't get there coming up shortly. So let's go ahead and simulate a little bit here and see if we might have a moment today's the all-star futures game one of your user controlled teams has all-star players would you like to stop simulating yes so the all-star futures game how do we access that the view organizations games there it is so i wish there was a way to actually check the roster without jumping in but we will pop in here and we should be able to player lock gavin williams who appears to be the starter we have any hitters we have joaquin arnold mm. so that's a tough one so i wish i could player lock a pitcher and then a hitter we obviously want to see joaquin arnold the fact that he has 99 potential we know he has 99 potential and he's regressing in some areas is extremely frustrating to me i'm not going to lie to you there i hate it a lot but it, it is happening hopefully that corrects itself at some point um, but also, like, we don't, we haven't really talked a ton about Gavin Williams. He's 25 years old, he's a top prospect of ours, and he has made it to the major league level in real life in 2023 with the Guardians, and has had some pretty good starts. Some not quite as good, but some real good starts in there. I think his start against Kansas City was especially good. It is the Royals, for lack of a... Uh, a real log exp explanation. All you need to know is it's the Kansas City Royals in 2023. It doesn't mean a whole lot. It's not like, you know, it's against the Braves or something. But it is still very impressive. Anyway. 
do I want to player lock Gavin Williams? I just feel like he hasn't got enough shine in this series, but also, I don't know, he's not really developing that quickly. So, it doesn't quite, is it doesn't excite me as much. I think what we're going to do is just go in, play the game, and jump in when I have to. And we'll use the quick manage feature and head to Seattle, which is not where the All-Star game is in 2025. And uh, see what we can do. Joaquin Arnold in the three spot. We love that. All right, here we go. Gavin Williams versus Taj Bradley. If you guys did not watch the last episode intently, we made a trade to acquire, reacquire Andrew Abbott, who has pitched pretty well for the Reds in real life. And our rotation is a bit crowded, to say the least. We have, and I'm on pinpoint, I have to change my settings. And we'll have an interesting decision with some of our starters. You know, I, I keep mentioning how Gavin Williams really hasn't had his shine. But he's not developing that quickly. And we do now have a problem at the Major League level after reacquiring Andrew Abbott. That we got a lot of starting pitchers. And we already, you know, moved Johnny Chirinos to be a long relief role. Which totally makes sense. That's his role in real life with the Rays. So I'm totally fine using him in that role. But Griffin Canning, who's a starter... We move to the pen. I, I think he should really be a starter for us. The fact that Lodolo is getting better attribute-wise, as Gavin Williams reports a strikeout on high cheese to Eldon Schroeder. The fact that his attributes are getting better and his performance is getting worse and worse and worse, I can't rely on that. And that, that's a tough thing because he's supposed to be an ace caliber pitcher for us and... He really is not. Here's Michael Jordan, by the way, that the White Sox drafted. We had the opportunity to. He's got the mustache. He's not fooling anybody. We know you're not 18, Michael Jordan, to the Chicago White Sox. We've seen this story before. Only six foot, though. All right. You know, he went to that trouble to lose like six inches. You got it. It's commendable. It's commendable. Here he is with this ridiculous mustache. The show with their auto-like generated players, <laughs> no one has that mustache. It's not 1880. Regardless of that, yeah, we've got a lot of tough decisions to make with our uh, our rotation. Is the long and short of it. Ooh, a double, and then a run scored after a Luis Toribio single brings up Cincinnati Red Joaquin Arnold. He's slumping big time right now in the minors. That's probably why he's going down. His average is only 268. For a decent chunk of the season, maybe like, you know, three or four weeks, I feel like it was like close to 400. So it's way down now. The OPS has come down as a result, but does have 11 home runs. But certainly not doing a lot to earn a promotion at AAA. So he gets into one, shooting it to deep center field. Running track power. Joaquin Arnold's got to hit the weight room. Really good swing, hit it well, just hit it to the deepest part of the park. And here where the ball really doesn't particularly travel at T-Mobile, you're not going to do a whole lot there. Gavin Williams back on the mound. In these type of situations, you usually see these pitchers go, you know, maybe two or three innings at most. So probably not going to see a whole lot more from Gavin Williams, who is 25 in this game, as we uh, chronicled a little bit earlier. So he is already, you know, a should-be major league guy in terms of age, as a Dale Amador lays out. Can't make the play. He's going to come up eventually. I don't know what his role is going to be. I don't know if he's going to work out of the pen or what. But his attributes are just not where I want them to be. It's tough to make that call. But he's performing well. He's earned a shot. I think I've got to give him one eventually. Fastball. Front of Paulino, he'll make the catch out number one. Would love a put away pitch, but when you can throw upper 90s with location, it's tough to to want to throw a different pitch. It's, it's such a dominant number one offering, as we'll face the Orioles' Kobe Mayo for however much longer. I think Kobe Mayo is somebody that could get traded. You probably expect the Orioles to be buyers at the deadline. Kobe Mayo kind of seems blocked in their system behind a number of other. Uh, prospects and talented players for the Orioles at the major league level and when you picture that their infield could be you know any combination of Jordan Westberg and 
uh, Gunnar Henderson as just two of many young infielders on that team. You know, Kobe Mayo at, at third base, first base could potentially be very blocked as a fly out to Robert Hassel in center field is out number two. Ryan Mountcastle, you expect to come back healthy and be good. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't happen. Maybe they opt to trade somebody else. A Heston Kierstad is an option, but I kind of feel like Kobe Mayo is, is one that could move considering uh, their talent not only at the big league level, but in the minors as well. As this is another fly ball, Ortiz getting to it, range is over, makes the play, and that is probably all we're going to see for Gavin Williams. Two innings of pretty good pitching, we'll take it. Terribio walks to bring up Joaquin Arnold once again. Big fly out in his first A.B. Now we'll face the Tigers' Jackson Job. Getting a little bit tough to see the ball with the shadows in center field there. And you can see even the batter's eye. It's bright at the top and dark at the bottom. It makes it very difficult to see. I know MLB The Show is all about the realism, but I can't see the ball. I'm, I'm really, really struggling. I see a ball shape coming at me. Good thing I'm not using zone hitting. As Joaquin Arnold rips it up the middle for a base knock. Two out rally here by the NL. And we'll see if... Angelo Ramirez can drive in any of these batters. Angelo Ramirez, what can you do for us, pal? Got a fastball. It's not even close to fair. I mean, you're, you're strutting your stuff down the line. That is like 40 feet foul. Not even close. And just like I was not even close to that slider. Way out in front. Come on, Angelo. Rip in a one. What can you do? Not much. Two and two. Let's see a pitch to hit. How about that? We want to see Joaquin Arnold run. There's a pitch to hit. Deep to right center. Arnold's on his horse. But he doesn't have to run very fast. Because that ball is over the wall. Angelo Ramirez with a home run. Don't know anything about him. As he could be a fake player. Jackson Job surrenders a three-run shot. Joaquin Arnold, you know, doing a good job of extending the inning. Of course, Toribio with the walk as well. And uh, that's big time power to right center field. Only 398. But uh, yeah, that's a decent shot. All right, we will get another Joaquin Arnold AB. Mauricio Colon comes on for the American League. Future stars. Or futures. And we'll see if we can get another base hit here. I'd love to pull one out. And that is a fastball way up. Taken for a ball by Arnold. Come on, Joaquin. Wow, big breaking, or not even a breaking ball, big off speed pitch, change up, first time seeing that. Felt like we were all over it, a slightly early. All right, well, uh, Arnold goes down swinging. Arnold will get another shot, this time against Darren Trainer. Seeing his pitches could be helpful. Four seam, two seam, curveball, change up. So everything kind of working vertically. We'll see if that gives us an advantage. If the pitcher locates well, it is actually gonna be tough. Especially with this camera angle. As a fastball gets in on the hands of Arnold for a strike. Late on that one. Really well located four seamer. Right on the black. There's a curveball that Arnold swings through. Timing felt pretty good on that. Perfect timing. Just a well located curveball and a swing and a miss from Arnold. And I'll be honest with you, I'm seeing a little bit too much of that from Joaquin. Yeah, you're not gonna get hit you're not gonna get hit every time up. I get that, right? Maybe not even make contact every time up. But I'd like to see it. <laughs> you know, especially in a game like this, you're facing other prospects. We we need to see results. He's loving hitting the ball to center field. You got to love his straight up, back up the middle approach. But it is another out. Getting sick of those. Pretty good game so far. But the NL Futures have defeated the AL Futures by a score of 5-4. to four. I even saw an AB from Micah Vento in this game. He got at least a pinch run opportunity. I don't know if he hit. But Micah Vento I saw thrown into the game. He got a pinch hit spot. Didn't get a hit. But Micah Vento is in our system. Would have loved him to come through with something. But happened so quickly. And I go, well, hold on a second. Mike Avento is one of mine, but it, it didn't end up happening for him.
But it is the first year player draft 2025. Jose Chavis is going to be added to our draft queue. Quick refresher on him. He can hit. He's a corner outfielder who doesn't really grade out as a great fielder at any point in his career. Might be better suited at first base, but he can run. So I guess there is a chance he stays in the outfield. Um, but we do have some good hitting. We have some good pitching as well. But Pedro Doe could be one to watch out for. It looks like he's got great stuff, incredible stamina, good velocity. Six foot two high schooler out of Mexico, only 18 years old. Potential seems quite good. We're going to add him to our draft queue as well. And you can draft other players out of your queue as well. I'm just trying to give you guys a little bit of a refresher. You know, depending on who makes it to us, Rafael Diaz could be a fit. I know he's another one of these third base, first base guys. We took Joaquin Arnold last year. But sometimes you just do take the best player available. And Diaz looks like he's going to have solid potential and a really, really solid bat. So you just take the best player that gets to you a lot of the time. And uh, we're going to look to do that. And I do want higher strikeout potential from a lot of these pitchers. It, we just really don't see in the draft very often from you know these past couple as far as I can tell. I, I haven't done that many of them. But... A lot of these guys have high hits for nine, like George Rodriguez profiles to be one of the better guys in the league at limiting hits. But the strikeouts is just going to be average. And I, I want a higher potential strikeout guy if we're going to draft somebody, you know, near the top of the draft. And Lonnie Vargas could be that guy. Six foot four, 21 years old out of Venezuela. K per nine looks like it's going to be at the very top of the league. Problem with him, though, is the hits per nine does not. He looks like he's going to really, really, really struggle to get outs. And I don't know what you can do with that. But he's going to be somebody we at least look at. Draft rank is 53. If we come around to the second round, he's on the board. We might give him a shot. All right, here we go. Draft 2025. Rockies on the board first. I think the Royals are not too far behind. And we'll see what the Rockies decide to do. Hopefully no one we're interested in. Although it's no guarantee that we get who we want. That's just pretty much what it comes down to. Doe and Chavis could both be off the board by the time we pick. That's a reality. But they take George Rodriguez. The number five ranked player in the draft for us was number four. Looks like he's going to have decent potential. Overall seems pretty high already to start as well. But maybe our scouting report isn't entirely accurate. He could be better. He could be worse. That is the nature of the draft. As the number two player is going to be Teague. Doug Teague, selected by the Royals, potential could be quite high. Draft rank for us was five, opted out of the doctor's exam. But our scouting progress was only 54% on Doug Teague. So there's, again, no telling that any of that is even remotely accurate. As the Oakland Athletics, maybe soon to be Vegas by 2025, take Perry Kroger, a starting pitcher who is draft rank three, but for us, 17 Although I look at him, potential seems good. Overall could be decent. Not sure that he's going to be that bad. Uh, but we have a problem. We have to wait till 14 to make our selection. And I think Chavis could be off the board as the Pirates go Richie Cairo. Uh, Pedro Doe certainly could be as well. You look at our prospects. Chavis is draft rank 23. So maybe we got a chance. Doe is draft rank 24. Kind of same deal. These guys go higher all the time. Lonnie Vargas, I think we can definitely get. But the rest, not quite sure about. Diamondbacks go Rafael Diaz. Giants go Thomas Murdoch. Nats on the board at 7. Go with Play Rocker. I wish you could get a scouting report, and you can. That's nice. Diaz is a third baseman. We talked about him briefly as well. Bat looks like it's going to be quite good. Giants going Thomas Murdoch. And the Red Sox have taken... Our number one, Jose Chavis, is headed to Boston. Doesn't mean we can't make a trade for him, but there is no trading in the draft, so you cannot move up. Tigers go Grady Keneally. He's got high strikeout per nine stuff. Rest you kind of worry about a little bit. Crazy eyes. Maybe a good thing if he's a pitcher. Hubert Williamson, a pitcher that we did not particularly love. Great defender, wow. But again, that, that stuff could be inaccurate. Uh, Nick Lopez as mutton chops, okay. Don't really see too many prospects with mutton chops nowadays. As the Marlins go, Bernardo Rodriguez, a shortstop. 
who could be very good defensively. Hit tool looks to be okay, but not a great scouting percentage on him. As we are finally to our pick, Enrique Olivo goes a spot ahead of us. He looks like he has decent uh, attributes in there, but the scouting progress is not high. So I think we're just in a really good position to take a starting pitcher, and it's going to be Pedro Doe from Mexico. Stamina, great. Hits per nine, strikeouts per nine, walks per nine, home runs per nine, pitch control, pitch velocity, and pitch break all seem to be at least average. So I think he's going to be a really nice player for us. Injury risk is only average. He's very interested in becoming a red 65% interest. And Pedro Doe will be a Cincinnati Red. Draft rank three for us. We could use pitching because you can always use pitching. Marcus Stroman, long-term question mark for us, certainly, right? Griffin Canning, throw him in there. We don't know what's going to happen to Lodolo. Pitching is never a bad idea. Our next draft pick is at 37 in competitive balance round A. And we don't pick again until 52. So Lonnie Vargas absolutely makes the most sense for us here. Seems like his potential could be elite. The hits per nine is a major concern, but the stuff appears to be amazing. So we're going to be taking the 20-year-old starting pitcher out of Venezuela. Potential seems sky high. Overall, seems to be in a pretty good spot as well. Welcome Lonnie Vargas to Cincinnati as well. Of course, we do have to sign these players as well, so it's not a guarantee that they will be Cincinnati Reds, but it is very, very likely. I don't think I'm going to screw up signing anybody. So Lonnie Vargas is... Picked a little bit earlier than maybe he expected to go, but that is the MLB draft for you. As uh, we should be able to sign him under slot value if we want to. And we are all about starting pitching in this one, as we'll head to pick number 52. So we only had a few guys on our draft list. And I think that's the way to do it, honestly. Maybe you guys have experienced a better and you have everybody scouted. But I think the, the higher picks matter the most. And then you kind of take some shots down the board. See if you can land somebody sick. You know, if you do, great. If you don't, whatever. Michael Hu is someone that I'm going to be interested in. Potential seems to be good. Really a defense first guy, but it's important to have those players, even if he is an infielder. He seems like he's going to be a solid, solid player. Uh, I think this pick, though, we're going to go ahead and take Ralph Bean. More pitching, and Bean has great stamina. Hits per, or excuse me, walks per nine and pitch velo. Potential seems to be in a decent spot. And we know he's going to be solid uh, for the range. 80% scouted. He might not be an elite type player, but Ralph Bean is someone that at least should be okay. So I know that's not exactly shooting for the stars there, but he should be all right. All right, let's take a Michael Hu, a third baseman from South Korea. And, I mean, defense looks great. You could use some of those guys. And I, I don't typically go after the defenders, but you know what? Our defense is so bad that we could use at least somebody in our system that's capable of playing the field. We're going to go for a reliever here. Daniel Stallings from Kansas. Don't let these ratings fool you. He's probably going to be terrible. But he's a reliever. We could use more of those in our system. And we are going to draft Daniel Stallings. Didn't have a lot of these guys scouted, but it's round five at this point. Not really super worried about it. You know, we could take Manny Villarreal, an option, Alfredo Fuentes. These are pitchers who are, are going to be okay, probably. Uh, overall, might not be great. Potential, certainly not going to be great. Which one do I prefer? Fuentes and Villarreal are both 80% scouted. Fuentes is a better chance to sign for us, although they probably both will if we were to draft both of them. I don't know. Potential seems slightly higher on Villarreal. And... I don't know. I mean, I, stamina, I don't really care about as much. Walks per nine is important. Could be 81. Could be 72. Let's go with Alfredo Fuentes. I don't know. Like, you're, you're taking shots at this point. And I think with my next pick, it should be our last pick, I'm just going to take... Whoever looks the best overall, regardless of anything. Just take a complete swing. Complete shot in the dark. Try to hit. There's not any of that really even left. We're going to take Lewis Sizemore, another starting pitcher. Stuff looks pretty good, to be honest. We have him 70% scouted. Potential is going to be bad. But he could just be somebody that fills in for us. Just comes in, 
and eat some innings one year if we develop him right. Overall, seems like it's going to be decently high um, for, you know, a real back end of the, the draft type player. And you don't expect much from those guys down the board. But if you get anything out of them, you're happy enough. We actually do have a moment here. Bottom nine, no outs. Alexis Diaz in for a second inning of work. He'll face the troublesome... Xander Bogarts. Also, saw that Paul Goldschmidt is a Padre. And they're not messing around. Hasn't really worked in real life with AJ Preller's moves, but he is never afraid to make them. See how much longer he is the general manager. If the Padres make a miracle run, maybe he is forever until he dies. <laughs> there, There is a, a chance that that happens. Padres just right now are not looking so good. As Diaz is now up to pitch number 15. Here in the bottom of the ninth. We're on the road. Don't really want to get walked off. We get Bruised R going. We get TJ Antone going. To be fair, you know, with their ERAs, 3.56, 3.28 for Canning. I think Torinos and Canning have done quite a good job in their long relief roles. So I'm actually feeling better about the decision to move them there with their ERAs, you know, floating in the low to mid threes. Not too bad as Spencer Steer ranges over to catch the fly out. That's a mistake pitch. Pretty lucky Bogarts didn't do more damage with that. Could have been an easy double to lead off the ninth. Ground ball at McLean. He'll field, throw cross body, out number two. But we're cruising with Alexis Diaz. He's been so great for us this year. Way different than the past couple of years for us in Red's franchise. And we quickly have Yu Chang down 0 and 2. Put him away with the slider. They never chase it in that spot. It's got to be out. It's got to be over here. And he chases. Down goes Yu Chang. And we'll come up to hit. Trying to get the go ahead run here in extra innings. It is the ever electric Ellie De La Cruz. 0 for 4 in this one. Suarez has just a litany of different fastballs. Four-seam, two-seam, cutter. Also features a circle change. And that two-seam gets in on you pretty quick. 98. Down and away. Runner on second with the ghost runner rule. The Manfred man. Hopefully Ellie not blinded by the light here. Bright lights of Petco. It is daytime. Whatever. Come on, Ellie. Get a hit. Fastball up. Strike two. Now, I hate to say it, but Ellie is not really the guy you want up here. Because he's not the highest bat-to-ball skill player for us. Really didn't want to strike out there. Needed to get that runner over to third. But Ellie comes up clutch. Shoots it the other way on the ground for a base knock. First and third. Runners on the corners. Nobody out. Didn't try to do too much. Just got a fastball down. Did a good job of hitting it where they ain't. And that'll bring up Spencer Steer. Better bat to ball skills. And you'd like to think he can drive in a run. And there is one. Ellie. Bluffs going to three. We'll send him back to second base. He's out at second. Okay, cool. Cool. He takes the biggest turn ever. I sent him back so much earlier. Whatever. Winker. I fly ball. We'll be out in number two. Tyler Stevenson on the bench. Matthew Nelson caught this game. We're going to bring in Tyler Stevenson to pinch hit and play catcher. If an injury happens, we're in rough shape. No question about it. But this is a good pinch hit spot. And you'd like to have Ellie De La Cruz standing on second base. I thought he'd have a better shot going first to third. And then when I sent him back, it, it took 20 minutes to turn him around. Unfortunately. But it wouldn't have mattered anyway. It's a ground ball, double play type ball with one out. Obviously, there's two because of Ellie. So, inning would have been over regardless. But we got to take Alexis Diaz out. It's going to be bruised. Our Gratterall on for the save. Again, I'm really considering making him the setup man. And Alexis Diaz giving him the closer spot again. Uh, but we'll see if bruised Dar can pitch. Got Manny Machado hitting seventh. Did he pinch hit in this game? It's possible. Deep fly ball. Tyler O'Neill. Plenty of time, though. Chases it down. Runner will try to advance. A good relay could make this close. But there is no play at third. Runner advances. That is a tying run. And up steps Kyle Higashioka. 
the home run stroker. It's a bad nickname to have for a guy like, like this right now. He's going to bunt. He lays it down. He's going to have it easily. We'll take the out at first. Kyle Higashioka is such a great ball player. Ties it up. And we hopefully will now fight to see an 11th inning. Not so fast. Ground ball down the line. Fraley fields. That's going to be a double. That's, that's no good. <laughs> that's my review. No good. Is Paul Goldschmidt hitting leadoff? Back-to-back -back fastballs. Only hitting 215 with runners in scoring position. You know, we faced him a lot with the Cardinals, but he's made it to the Padres somehow. Is that a trade this year? I don't remember seeing one. He fights it off 1-2. Very late on the slider. We're going to go back to it. We got to get it away. I don't know how many times I have to say that. Try the cutter. Good spot. Goldschmidt spoils another one. Gear 4 seam gas. Goldschmidt gets in a one. Deep to left field. Not coming back. Alexis Diaz is a new closer. It's a great spot on the pitch. I mean, it, it's exactly what you want to do. Exactly where you want to throw that. And Paul Goldschmidt just stays on it. Hits it out. Walks us off. Tyler O'Neill, three for three with a double. That's nice to see. All right, as I said... These two are swapping. Bruzdar back to the setup spot. He's got a 3-5 ERA. He's good. That's a little bit higher than you'd want from your closer, though, I'm going to be honest with you. Alexis Diaz, 1.88. Continuing to get better as well, by the way. 88 overall. And his whip is a little bit higher than Bruzdar, but he's done a better job this season. I mean, it's night and day. 2022 real life ERA of 1.84. Last year, 509. 2024 was even worse, 6.59 with a whip at one and a half, which is somehow an improvement. This season, he's back to his old self. Getting strikeouts, limiting hits, uh, although three home runs is a little high based on eight total earned runs. But he's our new closer. Had to be. There are no Reds participating in the home run derby. So we will go ahead and pass on the Home Run Derby. I hope at one point we can actually see that in this series, but it's not going to be this year. Do we have an All-Star is a question. Everybody does, so that's the answer. Do we have an All-Star starter, though? I look to the NL. I see Michael Harris, Brendan Donovan, and a big lack of Reds, except for one, Tyler Stevenson. Missed him the first time around. All right, well, player lock with Tyler Stevenson. Player lock is I have to catch every inning. <laughs> oh, we got a bunt. And I, I did change to button accuracy, by the way. I'm tired of, like, screwing up behind these, uh, these stupid moments because I don't know how to do the freaking uh, whatever they want for you. You know what I'm saying here. The... Uh, I can't speak today. I'm having trouble. It's been a weird episode. But I can't deal with the whatever weird throwing mechanic they have in player lock. I was told I can do button accuracy. I'm doing button accuracy. The one they have sucks. It, it, the one they have is terrible. 3-1 to Stevenson. Come on, Otani. He just didn't want to throw a pitch to hit. We had to go out and get one. Stevenson's going to fly out to center field. That probably would have been ball four. It was on the black. Could have been a strike, but... Otani didn't want anything to do with Tyler Stevenson. As uh, we'll get at bat number two here in the bottom of the fifth, here at PNC. That's so funny. They have the All-Star Futures game in Seattle. <laughs> but the All-Star game's at PNC, and we're wearing the Seattle American and National League jerseys. They got to just get default ones. But it's so stupid that they wouldn't change. Like, if you're going to have the, the All-Star game be at PNC, that's great. Have the Futures game there as well. Make it make sense. Anyway, doesn't really matter too much. I'm just saying. My immersion has been completely destroyed. AL smashing the NL. What's new? Although the NL did actually beat the AL for once last night. Could make a comeback. It's a good start. Stevenson gets in a one. Deep to right field. Going to be off the base of the wall. We're going to have to stay one. Ball's in way too quickly. 
And it's going to be first and third. Nobody out as Alex Lang is struggling here in the sixth. Trey Turner, we need a big hit. He's down 0-2 in the count. He'll make contact at least. I don't know where the ball is. I have no idea where the ball is. Infield pop-up? It looked like I was hit to right field, dude. All right, maybe that's just me. Am I all right today? I don't know. As Olsen strikes out, we're not going to win. I mean, runners in the corners, nobody out. And it, it, same situation with two outs now. Michael Harris had a, says had a great game. Two for three. Looks like a couple extra base hits and a strikeout. Top seven now. Rutschman going to lay down a bunt. Good. Nice. Thanks for the out. The old two out bunt from your catcher with a nine to four lead. Good baseball. As Felix Bautista hung a splitter all over it. 107 off the bat. Way foul. Way out ahead of it. Because when he throws, you know, 100 and whatever miles per hour, you got to get out ahead of it. Uh, unfortunately, he hung a, a slider. We were early on it. We popped it up. And the National League falls at the hands of the American League. 9-4. to four. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try to sign our draft picks. Pedro Doe, Lonnie Vargas, Ralph Bean, Michael Hu, Alfredo Fuentes. I mean, there are a lot of them in here. We're going to add the, uh, well, Doe, I guess we don't really even need. We don't need scouting either. Let's go ahead and remove him. Um, I want to add someone with low interest. Ralph Bean's going to be number one. We'll go Doe there. We'll go Lonnie Vargas there. We do want to sign these guys. And we can negotiate if they have a 60 or 50% interest i believe so slot value here is 4.2 his bonus demand is way under that we're gonna give him 3.34 and he has signed on so saving a little bit of money there going under slot value pedro doe to cincinnati lonnie vargas we will look to sign as well he wants a little bit more we'll give him 1.77 mil still under slot value lonnie vargas has signed with the reds we knew those ones were going to be pretty easy. We got to get Ralph Bean more interested. Michael Hu should be interested just to sign with any team, as we'll offer Alfredo Fuentes a deal. Once again, going to go way under slot value, and Alfredo Fuentes is signed on as well. We are being cheap as hell. If you don't know what slot value means, each pick, each slot has a value, and you only have so much in the MLB draft. So a lot of teams try to you know, kind of game the system a little bit. And instead of getting one, you know, super high up player or a ton of money, they don't want to limit the rest of their picks. So they'll get like two guys they know they can sign for cheaper because they think it might have more overall team value for them rather than just the one player. As Lewis Sizemore, we're going to go under slot value. He has declined, whatever. And uh, we'll just keep that that way for now. And this is unreal. Tyler Stevenson has already tripled. He is a home run away from the cycle. We have a 9-1 to lead over the Dodgers. Gavin Stone, top pitching prospect for the Dodgers, is into the game. He struggled in real life in 2023 and then was sent down and then recently called back up because of, uh, I think, some injuries happened to the Dodgers pitching staff. And... I mean, why not swing for the fences? Changeup really should be his primary pitch, I think. It's his best one. Maybe not his primary, though. I mean, surely we have to power swing, right? We got to go for it. And we are late. Popped up to first base. Freeman is there. Stevenson is retired. And we're not heading for the cycle. We do win the game, though. 9-1. to one. Stevenson, of course, did everything but hit for the cycle. He had a fantastic game. Hunter Green... Very, very good start. Goes seven strong. Only allows six base runners. Struck out six as well. One run. O'Neal homered and had a double. Hunter Renfro with a home run. And I'll tell you what. Tyler O'Neal, it looks like he's turning things around. Let's get an update on Tyler O'Neal. He's hitting 225, which isn't great, but it's way better than where he was. The OPS is way up because he's slugging. 775 OPS. Obviously not you know, what we wanted when we signed him, but it's way more encouraging than what we saw in the first, you know, couple of months. He's been better of late, and hopefully we'll have a big second half. 
he could end up with 30 home runs. So we'll see if he can continue his hot stretch at the plate and continue uh, with a huge July as we are trying to shut it down. Our closer. Now, Alexis Diaz, he earned this opportunity. You got to get Mookie out. This is a really tough Dodgers order. Did we make the right decision? Mookie Betts is their three hitter. Leads off for the Dodgers in real life. And he's found his, uh, his power stroke a bit. Just pulls the ball out. Hits it on the ground here. Going to be a tough play for McLean. Mookie doesn't run particularly well anymore and is safe. I don't even think an accurate throw would have had him. We tried to get that off as quickly as possible. As Anthony Santander now plays for the Dodgers. Diaz just trusts that fastball. Got to trust it a little less. We got to locate it better. Two seamer down, another base hit. Braley Fields throws into India. Runners on first and second, one down. And this is not our best ground ball pitcher on the mound. Goes without saying. You know, that, that fastball combo, not really a great ground ball inducer. Sinker cutter would be a little bit better for it, especially that sinker. But a strikeout would be big too. This is a guy you kind of think you got a decent chance to get to ground into a ground ball double play. He's the catcher, not a ton of speed, but we'll take the pop-up instead. Two away, and it's Tyro Estrada having a huge year. 291 average, 890 OPS, I think that said. Oh my goodness, 19 home runs for Estrada. Yankee legend, get him to make an out somehow. It seems like he doesn't do that this year. One and two. It's gonna be the slider. We all know what's coming. Does Estrada, he doesn't. Strike three, got him swinging. Big save for Alexis Diaz. I think we made the right move. Our new closer shuts it down against one of the better teams in the league. And he had to deal with a number of really, really tough hitters. Obviously, some of them reach. Smokey Betts, doesn't matter. Matt McLean gets a home run. O'Neal goes two for four with a home run. I'm telling you, he's, he's turning it around. We are still... Keeping that 7-3 and three in our last 10. That seems to be what we're going to do the entire rest of the season. I'm not complaining. I'll take that. Ooh, Lewis Sizemore gets worse and worse. He's going to be bad. I'll offer him a contract anyway. We're going to give him 240. You don't want what you're demanding. You're demanding 240 and you're like, I don't want 240. Figure it out. Ralph Bean. Try to get him. 1.1 mil. He declines that. Again, your bonus demand is 737k. I'm giving you way more than that. And you're like, nah. What's, what's the point of their demand? If you meet their demand and they say no. But we are on a win streak. Oh my goodness. One, two, six. That's how you count. <laughs> oh my goodness. Six in a row. We swept the Dodgers. We swept the Twins. The Rangers are going to be tough. At Colorado is always weird. We are now 8-2 in our last 10, and 58-38, and 38, starting to run away with the NL Central. Ralph Bean is not going to be that good, probably. We're going to sign him. There you go. Welcome to Cincinnati, Ralph. Sometimes you just have to have players who are in the organization. That's all I got for you. Daniel Stallings declines, of course. Lewis Sizemore is going to accept. We'll give him a little bit more money. Welcome to the Reds, unfortunately. And then Michael, who, I mean, look at him. Look at that smile. He wants to be a Red so bad. Welcome to Cincinnati. 899K and you decline? Michael, what are we doing? Seven in a row. And this could be eight. Ellie De La Cruz has a 10-game hit streak. Top eight, nobody out. We are down by two. Jonathan India with a home run in this game, by the way. Love to see that. Ellie's got to come up clutch here. He did our, our earlier in this video with a base hit. Now, not only do we need to keep that hit streak alive, we need to keep our win streak alive. His average is up over 250, OPS over 750. Still trying to turn him into that superstar. And the shadows are tough here. At, uh, is this, they call it Globe Life still? I think it's just New Globe Life, isn't it? Whatever, it's New Texas Stadium. That's what we'll call it. Sinker's tough. Ellie quickly down 0-2. Oh, 
And is gonna fight. Hanger, oh my goodness, it's a slider right down the middle. Ellie beats it into the ground and beats out the throw at first, so no double play. But man, how do we not hit that harder? I mean, I guess it was 93 off the bat, just right on the ground. Ellie, man, kind of a huge missed opportunity. As see Hunter Renfro, big swing. Ellie going halfway, unfortunately. Nope, uh, dude, so I changed the uh, the buttons or the, the input from the, the analog stick to buttons and it's not L1, R1 in player lock for some reason. It's right trigger, left trigger and R1 in the actual game, like when I'm playing, is advanced. Here it's, it's or R1, is, excuse me, is not advanced. Here it is advanced. So I'm, it's just confusing. I don't know why they need to have 80 different controls and buttons for every situation as we do end up finally losing. We allowed four home runs. That's going to do it. All within the first two innings as well. Okay. Well, win streaks can't last forever. That's all right. And we will lose another game at the hands of the Rangers. They just have our number. They're a good team. And Tyler O'Neill, what do you know? Two for four with a home run. Tyler Stevenson, three for four with a home run. We will enter the game. We are down. Top nine on the road. Tyler Kinley is the Rockies' closer. Dude, we, if we don't win this game, I don't even know. Come on, O'Neal. I feel like he goes two for four every game now. Oh, my goodness. Pass ball. We will advance. Swung right through that. I don't even know what the catcher's doing. It just went right underneath his legs. That's a tying run into scoring position. That is a major gift. That was a, that was a tough pitch to hit. 92 mile per hour slider. Is Tyler Kinley nasty? What is he throwing? He might be. Okay, that's good. That's good contact. That should score a run at least. There we go. Not going to send Ellie, but it is 10 to 10. O'Neill gets the job done. Sack fly to right. Will Benson comes home. And Jonathan India, we need a hit. That's a front door 90 mile per hour slider, by the way. On the inner third. That was a crazy pitch. India! Deep to left! If it's fair, it's gone! And it is! Jonathan India smokes one down the left field line to give us a huge lead at this point. <laughs> Obviously not. It's it's at course. It's a nice, you know, two-run lead, but it's it's nothing at a place like this. But we'll take it. Jonathan India, big crunch time. Clutch home run, knocks Kinley out of the game. They're going to bring on Lucas Gilbreth. And we will uh, potentially counter and uh, bring on Spencer Steer. Hits lefties well, can play left field, does it in real life. And is having a really nice season for us. So Spencer Steer makes something happen. Well, gets into this one a little bit. Deep to left field. Diving stop cannot be made. Spencer Steer with a double. That would have been an insane play from the left fielder. He couldn't come up with it. You know, he didn't get the best read off the bat. I was thinking this was probably going to get caught. But Steer attacks the first pitch. Pulls it. And just kind of keeps trailing away from the left fielder. Made a great effort. But couldn't come down with it. Now it's Jason Vosler. Could potentially pinch hit him as well. Some want him DFA'd. I don't necessarily blame you. But this is going to be Jason Vosler's AB. Anything we can get here is a positive. He is one for three today, so he's registered to hit. And we take a walk. He's hitting 087 with runners in scoring position this year. That's no good. But if we just get to the top of the order, we can just turn it over. I think we could see some success. That's ball three. We might just go completely red light. Take, take, take. If he strikes out looking, so be it. We are not swinging. And that is a favorable 3-0 strike call to make it 3-1. Okay. Matt McClain is on deck as the leadoff. And as I said, we were going to take that all the way. Although if we get another hanger like that, we will uh, try to put a good swing on it. Here's the payoff pitch. 3-2. Bought off by Vosler. We'll do it again. Three and two. 
Ball four low, Vosler works a walk. Runners on first and second. Two outs now for Matt McClain. Has homered in this game. Hits lefties well. And all he has to worry about are three pitches from the reliever Gilbreth. That is a mistake pitch. McLean hammers it to left, hit it way too hard. No run score, we'll go station to station. 113 off the bat for Matt McLean. Bases juiced for another lefty killer. It's Yandy Diaz. Get a mistake, blow the game wide open. Fastball, right at the shortstop. Hit it hard, Tovar was there. Inning over. Steer is gonna go play some left field. And Lucas Sims is going to go play some left bench. Alexis Diaz into the game. ERA, 1.66. 50 strikeouts in 43 and a third innings. Just 14 walks this year. Right-handers are hitting him better. But at the same time, only 229. And what do we do? We attack the righties. Fastball after fastball after fastball to set up the slider. How is that not 0-2? Chris Bryant does not hit righties particularly well. Here's a little rollover, just foul. And we're gonna go high heat. Man, big swing from Bryant. Steer in pursuit. He'll track it down for out number one. That was way too close. Big piece contact there from Zach Veen. I thought lefties didn't hit Alexis Diaz. Veen shoots it all the way to the wall. O'Neal gets it in. He's pushing for third. You don't run on Ellie. Zach Fien erased. You can't do that down by two. Absolutely not. Why is he trying to get three? I don't care. He runs on Tyler O'Neill and Ellie De La Cruz. That is a huge mistake. And now it's up to Michael Tolia. I can't even believe Zach Fien tried to turn that into three. That was so stupid. Inside out swing. Steer not going to come close. And they are down to their final strike. Alexis Diaz versus Michael Tolia. That's a hanger. Cannot throw that pitch in that spot again. Let's get it way off the plate. There you go. Tolia, another inside out swing. De La Cruz in pursuit. He can't make the play. The Rockies are alive. See, that may have scored a run. And then you'd have the tying run at first base for Matt Gorski, who was 0 3. Strike one. Oh, that's a strike now. Thank you. Strike two, fastball, throws him, Gorski doesn't want it. Slider to finish it. Goodbye, Gorski goes down, Diaz with the save. That was, a, that was an interesting inning, <laughs> to say the least. But big comeback, Jonathan India leads the way with a two-run home run. And Tyler Stevenson finishes three for four of the homer uh, to become player of the game. But I'm looking at, at Matt McClain with the home run. I'm looking at Tyler O'Neill with the home run. A lot of home runs in this game. McMahon, Sogard, and Romo for Colorado. And wow, another close game. Yandy Diaz leading the way with two home runs. And Kyle Freeland is working in a relief capacity for Colorado. I don't know if you if you if you want relief, you're not gonna get it with Kyle Freeland. I'll tell you. That can only bring pain. And more pain. Yandy Diaz hits lefties. He's got two home runs in this game, looking for number three, also as a double. So depending on what happens in this AB, we could be looking at a three home run game. We could be looking at a single short of the cycle if we can get something deep enough to the wall. And this one is Ray Guy hang time. Yeah, that is uh, no good. Rockies win this one. Okay. Home runs by Benny Montgomery, Sean Bouchard, and Zach Veen. All right, didn't really expect to lose two to the Rockies, but I think I think that's what happened, right? Oh no, that was right, against the Rangers on the 20th. We'll see if we can uh, hopefully beat the Rockies on the 23rd and not lose two like I just kind of set us up to do. As our only two draft picks left to sign are Daniel Stallings, who is really bad, and he's signed on. I should just left that. And then Michael Hu, who doesn't want to be here, apparently, but has finally signed on. Good defender. We didn't have that, so... There's at least something there with him. And we do end up losing two to the Rockies. Unreal. 13-1 after an eight-run sixth inning. Hunter Renfro, just a triple short of the cycle. That's most often what happens. It's very tough to do. 
And at Marlins Park, I don't love our chances. I don't think, you know, it's as bad as if it were like Yankee Stadium or somewhere. Oh, it's not Marlins Park. It's Great American. I, I really, I still don't like our chances. This is a, a tough triples park too, I want to say. I take a home run. Two and two. Come on, Hunter. Run into one. Red Fro, as we like to call him. Rips a four-seamer foul. Two and two. We'll do it again. Hopefully keeping it fair. And a great take from Renfro. Makes it a full count. Rake Fraley is on deck. And we won't get to him. Chase the fastball up. Ah, uh, no. Is that a home run? Why is this even a moment? Can't rob it. That's like five rows deep. Well, we win 14 to 5 anyway. On a Renfro, 3 for 5 with a homer. Tyler Stevenson does the same. Ellie, 2 for 5 with a home run. And Jesse Winker just continues to rake. 2 for 3 with a double. We'll take it. And four straight losses. We're 2 and 8 in our last 10. The wheels are falling off as we drop to 61 and 46. Today is the trade deadline. July 31st. And it's also the end of the episode. Let me know what you think we should do. Two and eight in our last 10 is not what I was expecting. We were red hot to start July. Had a big win streak. And again, as I said, the wheels have fallen off. Just one win since July 22nd. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Yandy Diaz is having a great year. You can see the numbers in the top left. Hitting 330 with eight homers. Tyler Stevenson, even better. 333 with 21 bombs. Ellie De La Cruz in that three spot finding a home. 262. Average continues to climb. 14 homers for him. Renfro, kind of exactly what you want from your uh, cleanup hitter. Average is never going to be super high for him. Although it's been in a decent spot in the past. Uh, in the 250, 260 range. But uh, he's regressing a little bit. But hitting home runs. Rake Fraley doing the job against righties, not so much against lefties, and Vosler's actually getting hot. Interesting. Tyler O'Neill is working to get moved up in the order. He continues to get better. OPS now over 800, so we might have to move some things around. Jesse Winker, 17 home runs. Matt McLean only hitting 250, but continues to get better. 293 on base, 430 slug. He's got to be better for us. And then Jonathan India is... Probably one of the better nine hitters in the entire league. He's putting up career best numbers for us. 2021 is real life. Doesn't count. But look at these numbers. 688 OPS. 711. 748 now. It's not amazing, but it's getting up there. Steer does start against lefties. He's having a great year. As I said, I updated his contact to be closer to what it is in real life based on his Diamond Dynasty card. He's hitting 280 with a 342 average or on base. Excuse me. 420 slug. 762 OPS. Not too bad from him. Hendrick isn't great. Bosler, it looks like, is getting better. And then Will Benson is just not really much of a hitter for us. Although having a great year in real life. And then our rotation, Hunter Green, real solid. Lodolo, really struggling. I think we can get a return on him. Because these numbers are just really bad. He gives up so many home runs as well. Lodolo's got to go. That's where I am now. I, I hate to do it, but Lodolo's got to go. He just does not perform for us. We can do better. We can get a haul. We're going to make a move at the deadline, I think. Ashcraft has been solid. Stroman figuring it out. And we might make the glove red, as someone has requested. And then Andrew Abbott is cold for us. He might go back down to AAA. Chirinos or Cannon could take his place very easily. We could just go ahead and do that. Rotation could improve. Or we could go out and get a really, really big arm at the deadline. That's a possibility. The trade block says that Brian Reynolds is always going to be on the trade block. Tarek Skubal. It is pronounced exactly like that, by the way. Not Tariq Skubal. Tarek Skubal. Could be someone we go out and get. He's got ace potential. He's having a great season. Tigers are looking to move him. That's something to consider. Curry's here. Harrison Bader. Alberto Mondesi, see some of these names, but I'll tell you, Luis Patino actually doing pretty well as well, but I'll tell you, this one, 
might be number one for us at this point. What does this look like? Interesting. All right. Not that far off. Something to consider. But thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.